subject this morning, the power of right attitude. Someone says that's a flat subject. I suppose if it had been the subject how to make a hundred thousand and not lose it, or how to find your mate and remain married and happily married ever afterwards, the place would be full of it. But in this subject, you're going to find something if you can conceive of it or perceive it rather, which is far greater than those two subjects I have mentioned. So listen carefully, let us receive the lesson which the Master has given us as we discuss this subject, the power of right attitude. The power of your right attitude will lead you to so act that you know the ultimate truth, which is the goal of life. You realize that, that you'll know why you're here, where you're going, and what the reward is for you if you follow with right attitude and act properly, and you will know the ultimate truth of existence, the goal of love. You'll know what we truly are, or what you truly are. Not as the poet said, what is it, a bag of bones and a hank of hair and something like that. Not that. But what are you? What is each one of us? In Psalms it says, ye are children of God. Children of the Most High, all of you. That's what we truly are, and that's ultimate truth. And if you have the right attitude and then do something with that right attitude, you will know the ultimate truth of existence. Let us realize that. If we know ultimate truth, the greatest thing is that there will be no separation between you and the Creator. Your Father, my Father. There will be no separation. And when there is no separation... A realization that you and your father are one, the attitude must be right to keep you on the path until finally you know your ultimate truth. So this subject is quite important. And let us realize what strength will come, what power will come, and what security will come if we know that ultimate truth, that there is no separation between us and our father. And that's what you can know. That's what everyone can know. If they have the right attitude and utilize that right attitude by following proper meditation and being one with God. These are facts those who try will find out. And so that leads us to the next part of the subject, investigation plus experience. Now, it is very important to first investigate something. Find out. Use the ordinary faculties which we, you have, which we all have, of mind and intellect, and use your reason. And if the thing which you are following or that which you are doing is reasonable, then investigate further. Investigate further because you cannot know ultimate truth <coughs> by the power of reason. Realize that. You cannot know ultimate truth by the power of your mind and intellect. The power of, uh, of ultimate truth must be known through the intuition of the soul. Therefore, unless you investigate and then experience it, how can you know what's best for you to do? How can I know what's best for me to do? So let us not forget that. People come and they, they read the autobiography like a gentleman came the other day. And I talked to him. And uh, he thought it was wonderful. I said, now that's fine. Now I say, you go to some other place and you read another book and you think that's wonderful. What you must do is what? Investigate, investigate further. And then through experience, know whether it's truth or not. So people make that mistake. They read the autobiography and they hear about self-realization and they meet the people who have that buoyant spirit. And then they don't do any more about it, which is wrong. You must investigate, because unless you experience a thing, it is not yours. You'll go from one thing to another. Someone tell you something, and that's fine. Then you hear something else. Well, that's better. Then that goes on. But if you take that thing which seems reasonable to you, 
by using, utilizing your own powers of reason, and it seems feasible, then investigate further. And through your own experience and a conscience within you, you can tell whether it's ultimate truth or not. So let us not forget this one point. Investigation and experience. We must do that. Now, <clears throat> we come to the point of difference between emotions and higher feelings. This is very important in discussing this subject of the power of right attitude. There's a difference between emotion and the higher feeling of the soul. And we must not be influenced adversely by our emotions. Emotions come, especially people following this path. In the beginning, they become all enthused. Fine, emotion carries them away. And then they fall flat some of them. But if that emotion is turned inward and becomes higher feeling of the soul, then they will go right ahead steadily. So we must not forget. Do not follow the emotion to the extent that it unbalances you or that it keeps you from reasoning. But change that emotion into deep devotion within. It's like investment. We all sometime in our lives have been having investment. And you know, you get all enthused. You make a little money and you get enthused. You're going to make 100000 And everything is dumped into that basket. And someone said, don't put the eggs in one basket. But one smart fellow says, put them in one basket, but watch the basket. And so we should realize that we all cannot do that. So we have to be careful with emotion. And do let the emotions run away with you. But be balanced. Be calm and peaceful. So <clears throat> we must not allow our emotions to deprive us of the truth of higher feeling. That's very important. Because as we said in the beginning, you cannot realize God, you cannot contact God through the emotions, through the mind or intellect, but through the intuition of the soul. And that comes when you have risen above reason. Understand that now. We have to use reason at first, otherwise we go off on a tangent. But we must finally relegate reason to the rubbish heap, so to speak, but we must substitute the higher feeling of the presence of God within us. That's the point. We have to use our reason, because in this world, we have to use it. We ought to keep out of trouble and know what's going on. But things of God pertain, pertaining to spirit have to be known through the intuition of the soul, which is above reason. And that's why it's so important to meditate regularly, because in meditation, you rise above reason, and the power of the soul flows forth. The intuition of the soul knows absolutely what's right for you, what's right for me. And with that intuition of the soul, we can go straight to God. We can know ultimate truth, which is the purpose of life. Now, <clears throat> we have an example in Sri Yukteswarji about the control of emotion. Those of you who have read the autobiography and have read about him, Realize how much he had under control his emotions and feelings, and how when it was necessary to use emotion, he did that. But when it was necessary to rise above emotion and let the higher feeling of truth of his soul govern his actions, he did that. And in the autobiography, we read these few words which are so indicative of the right attitude of Sri Yukteswarji and one attitude which we can follow. And we read as follows. Sir Tesuji fitted the Vedic definition of a man of God. Softer than the flower where kindness is concerned. Stronger than the thunder where principles are at stake. How wonderful that is. Some people are hard boys. They think because they're intellectually smart, you know, that nothing, no emotion bothers them. But this great man was just that other way. When it was necessary, he was softer than the beauty of that flower, 
But when it was also necessary, it was like thunder when principles were at stake. These are wonderful words to remember. And we should do likewise. We should have that right attitude. When it is necessary to be kind, we should not feel it is beneath our dignity to express kindness. But when we're trying to be swept off of our feet by emotion, when it is necessary to stand uncompromisingly for principle, we should do it. Because that's right. That's the attitude. That's the right attitude to have. In Proverbs, you know, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit is better than he that taketh a city. Why? Why? Because if you're ruled by your emotions, you cannot perceive the ultimate truth of life which comes. In the calmness within, through the intuition of the soul, no other way. And that's why meditation is so important for everybody, irrespective of their position in life. And so it is better to you control your emotions than to allow your emotions to control you because then, then you can feel the stillness of the presence of God within and entering into that stillness, you can know that you and your father are one. There is no separation between you. Now we come to the right attitude toward life. What is the right attitude toward life? Well, the thing is this. We must, we must have the right attitude toward life of learning from experiences. Master often said, Father, I thank thee for this existence. I welcome all experiences. Because if the experiences are taken with the right attitude, they lead to what? Now, I mean with the right attitude. They lead to ultimate truth. We all make mistakes. What of it? If we have the right attitude toward those mistakes, it will lift us up toward the right, the highest ultimate truth. So the right attitude toward life is very, very important. All the saints say that the purpose of life is to reclaim our divinity. Reclaim our divinity, what we truly are, one with God. And if we have that attitude which they have, that whatever they do, I don't care what it is, making a bed or doing anything, selling a house to anything. If you have the right attitude toward that and feel God is with you, he's doing it anyway, you think you are, but he's the sole doer if you have the right attitude. It will, as the saints act, lead to the ultimate purpose of life, the goal of life, to know ultimate truth. Let us realize that. In the Holy Science, one of the books of self-realization, which is a very important little book, we read Sri Yukteswar's words to this effect. Man now comprehends himself as a fragment of the universal Holy Spirit. If you meditate properly, you will know and feel yourself as a fragment of God. That's what we are, every one of us. How do you think this consciousness comes into your head? It doesn't just fall there from no, nothing. It's the presence of God. That's all covered up, I'll admit. It seems far remote at times, but when you remove those ideas of delusion, there he is, your own consciousness. Realize that. That's the attitude to have, no matter what you are doing. Realize that God is the doer, but correct yourself. That's very important. And so we read, man comprehends himself as a fragment of the universal the Holy Spirit, and unifies himself with that eternal spirit, God the Father. Now this unification is the goal of the created being. That's your goal, that's my goal. And our attitude should be that, that everything we do, we do for the bringing about of that goal of life. Unification with the one spirit of God. He is everything. He's in the flower. He is manifesting as the flower. <coughs> He's manifesting as you and all other of his children. And our action should be <coughs> with that attitude in mind. And that's true. It seems far remote at times, but that is absolute truth. And therefore, we should value all of life's experiences. We should welcome them. Sometimes they're not very good. 
Sometimes we wish they would go to someone else. But welcome them. Because they come to you, <coughs> because they come to me, they do you, they do me. Don't try to dodge it. The only thing to dodge is stay in this realm of delusion. Get out of it. Get out of it by knowing that God is with you. And there is no separation between you. That's the way you can avoid these things. What we have done, we bring with us. We cannot help it. But by the grace of God, let us not lay up new karma, which has to be worked out. That's why we should have the right attitude in every act we do. And the simplest way is to feel God. When you, as I have said, making a bed, or selling a house, or any of the millions of things we have to do. Feel God with you. He's the doer. But the delusion says, oh, you're selling the house. You're doing it. That's not so. And if you feel your oneness with God, you'll know that's true. That's ultimate truth. We have to realize that gradually, of course. Now, Master gives us good advice on this, these points which I am bringing out. In his little book, The Master Said, I know some of you read it. I wish you all would read it. It's the most wonderful little book because it's, it's down to earth. It's everyday experience. And we read as follows, that these two disciples were angry with one, one another and uh, they took the lengthy and unjust complaints to the master about one of the brothers. And so he listened quietly, taking it all in. And then he suddenly said, Change yourself. Change yourself. Take the attitude that you've got plenty to do. To be rid of this duality of consciousness, change yourself. Let the other boy alone. Change yourselves. If we'd all do that as we live this life, it wouldn't take long, would it, for us to be out of this duality of existence and feel the presence of God. So the Master has said that wonderful thing. Change yourself. And that is the key for highest good. That's the right attitude. If you know somebody's doing bad, you see they're doing wrong, don't jump on them. They've got enough trouble. Change yourself. See if you're doing it. See if you've got anything like that in you. I'm sure we all have. So the Master's words are very much to the point. Now, a few basic attitudes we must have. First is of courage. It takes lots of courage, especially in this, this speed of which this organization, this life is traveling along. It takes lots of courage. But if God is with us, realize this. If you have the right attitude, and this is the right attitude, that God has made you, put you here, he's in you, he can sustain you. If God is with you, who can touch you? Who can hurt you? How can things come out any other way but right? That's the courage we must have. That's one of the attitudes which is so important. Another is faith. Faith, have this faith. No matter what happens, no matter what circumstances come, no matter what is in the future for us, there's one thing you must have faith. It will come out right because God is with you. Now you've got to have that faith. And if you have that faith, you can stand unshaken, as the Master used to say, through the crash of breaking world. And these little troubles which seem so huge to us little human beings are nothing in the eyes of God. And if you have that faith, he can rectify everything. But you've got to have that faith and you can't deviate from that faith. You cannot lose that faith. That's a very important attitude to have. And finally, the last attitude which I have marked here is never, never give up. People start on the path of self-realization, as I said, full of pep and vigor. Some of them suddenly fall flat. Others keep on, and then they die out. Master used to say to me, you must last until the end. The last shall be first. What's that mean? Those who last until the end, who do not give up with their faith and courage, last until the end. They shall be first, first to what? First to no ultimate truth. And when they pass over, if you take it that way, you will be with 
God consciously. Why? Because you've never let go of him. If you let go of him, you'll lose him. As it says in the Bhagavad Gita, he who never loses sight of me, I never lose sight of him. And so we must do that. Never lose sight of God. I don't care what you've done or how bad you've seemingly been inside. You're just the same as everybody else. Just as pure as the other one. We're children of God. We must not forget that. We must hold that conception, which is truth, until the end. So these are the attitudes, some of the attitudes which we must have. And in closing, I'd like to bring up this one point, perhaps which is the greatest. That right attitude is like a magnet that draws the proper inner and outer circumstances to the man who has the right attitude toward life. Understand that. That right attitude that you have is like a huge magnet that governs your inner and outer circumstances as you travel along the path to God. You try it and see. You have the right attitude toward God and taught meditation and such things, and you will see things shaping up. That huge magnet draws the right things to you. You'll see this environment which is wrong, it'll change. You'll see your health which is not right, it will change. And you'll see the darkness of meditation give way to the light of God's presence. Why? Because your right attitude is a huge magnet that draws the right thing for you and the right thing for me. This is a wonderful point. I hope you remember it. And by the right attitude, the inner and outer circumstances are made right. But the greatest thing is that the separation between you and your father is removed. And a new relationship will come there. The most wonderful relationship which you never realized existed if you have the right attitude toward him. Because God is not a tyrant. God is love. God is the greatest force in the universe. And so there'll be a new living relationship between you and God. This is a fact. These are truths. All the saints will tell you that. Those people who meditate regularly will say, things are different. There's a new living relationship between me and my father. And these are truths. Now, if you have that new living relationship in which you feel your oneness with God and there's no separation, he knows you, everything you do is with you, don't you think you'll have the right attitude from then on? Certainly. The presence of God in that relationship is the greatest thing. As Brother Lawrence said, be in the presence of God. Everybody can. But the right way must be known. And that right way is through self-realization, fellowship, techniques, and meditation. Now, that doesn't mean that self-realization has a corner on anything. No, but self-realization teaches you the ultimate truth. It gives you the way whereby you can, through meditation, know your oneness with God. And knowing that, the idea that there's, you are separated from God is removed. Think of it. When you feel and know God is with you, and that you are part of him, his consciousness is, your consciousness is his presence. And then through right meditation, you expand that little narrow ego consciousness into the great consciousness of soul. And that comes by having the right attitude toward life. The attitude of the saints. The attitude of a true child of God. And I'll close by reading or giving to you one or two words of the Master, which I like to do from one of his little books, the Master said again, listen carefully. This sums up everything I have humbly tried to tell you. Listen to his words. Day by day, as you learn to meditate, a new awakening will come, a new living relationship between you and God. This will be established. The mist of silence and mystery that hangs over everything will slowly vanish before the dawning light of your mental and devotional search for God. That's the attitude we must have. 
A search for God. And we'll never be satisfied until we find him. You can have a million things. But until you find God, you will not be satisfied. You must find him. I must find him. That's the attitude we, we must have. And finally, the master concludes this way. The flowers then will say, Behold his smile in us. The birds will say he is singing in us. And your souls will say he is throbbing in me. Your inmost feeling will say, He is awake in thee now, whispering songs of his love everywhere. That's the attitude we must have in life.